Gamma Radio. Hello and welcome to Good Vibes on Gamma Radio. You join us live from Lower Spittle Market Square for a very special episode here at the Explorers Expo. Yeah, the, the people of Lower Spittle and the surrounding area have been going absolutely crazy over the rumours that the fabled treasure of Sara Madre is in fact located right here in our sleepy township. And this has attracted the Wasteland's premium vendors and craftsmen here today to showcase their wares. It's absolutely ridiculous. There is no treasure at all. What we have here is opportunistic charlatans flogging their dodgy wares in order to make a quick bead. I, for one, am having none of it. <laughs> well, you are our resident pessimist, Fog. Uh, well, I, for one, am very excited by the prospect of all these wonderful characters embarking on dangerous adventures. Think of the material. Well, I'm here to do a show, not fanny about with all these so-called potion brewers and ammo vendors. So on this week's show, Dave will be sticking microphones in people's faces and I will be hosting a new game show called Radium Run. Yes, and we'll be joined by a real investigative journalist, Stinky Badgers, and purported scientist, Nald Bacon, to discuss the recent enthusiasm for the legendary treasure of Sara Madre. And I have to say, listeners, I'm quite excited myself. <laughs> <laughs> right, on with the show. Uh, off you go then, Dave. Okay, well, uh, let's start by talking to some of the colourful characters, right? Uh, the wrong microphone, Dave. You need this Roma. Here. Uh, oh, you snapped the wire, you skunk. Uh, uh, right, so, uh, I'm here directly in Lower Spittle Market Square. The square has been taken over by all manner of traders, travelling salesmen and people just interested in the legend. We've got a real carnival atmosphere as people swap stories, trade tips, buy equipment and stock up for their own quests to solve the mystery of this ancient fable. <laughs> Hello there! Oh, y yes, uh, you! You're live on Gamma Radio. Uh, what's your name and what are you up to in the square today? Oh no, I'm on the radio. Uh, uh, hello everyone, I run Nora Bones Personal Training Service, uh, specialising in adventuring. Oh really? Uh, uh, how do you train people? Well, most people don't have enough experience in adventuring, so that's where my training comes in. I've got a serious giant rat problem in my basement. Oh, madam! My actual basement. Oh. And basically I get my clients to fetch me ten rats from inside. Ten rats? Sounds like hard work, Nora. Uh, do you give them anything in return? Well, as part of their training regime, we record their progress on this special chart they can purchase for one tin of beans. For clearing rats, they get ten experience points. Oh. So they don't get anything then? They get experience. This is a very important part of the adventurer economy. Hmm. Well, best of luck with that, Nora. Uh, over to this stall here and... Uh, hello, sir. What's your name and what are you selling? My name's Tudor Bone, and I'm selling dead rats. It, Tudor Bone. Dead rat. Oh. You're related to her, aren't you? Nora's my sister. Uh, helping adventurers is the family business. It's the NPC economy. NPC? What's that? Non-participatory capitalism. Oh, I see. So basically, somebody else does all the hard work whilst you stand around doing nothing. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's what adventurers are for, right? Well, thank you, Tudor. Uh, moving on. Uh, uh, what about you? You're live on Gamma Radio. What about me? Uh, what are you doing here today? Oh, I'm selling these lovely maps of the town to adventurers. Oh, let's see. Huh? Uh, that's, that's not where Mog's Bar is. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. And that's not Jean's Cafe. That, that's the Barber Surgeon. This map isn't at all accurate. Well, don't buy it if you don't want it. Uh, how about this one? A genuine map of the Sara Madre bunker itself, Ooh. based on the latest fartographic surveys. It's 100% accurate, to the best of our knowledge. It's blank. Yeah, yeah. as I said, 100% accurate to the best of our knowledge. You just fill it in as you go. Oh, well, OK, nice to meet you. Oh, oh, listen to that sound. I think this is where all the armourers are hard at work, selling their wares. Come on, everybody. Fresh armour, over here, get it whilst it's hot, straight off the forge. I'll take one, take my beans. All right, bucko, let's get that on you. Ah! Oh, ouch, he was a bit too eager there. Uh, just goes to show how excited everyone is to be here. Hmm, mm, smells nice now, barbecue. Come on, 
Get your armor, armor here. Over armor, under armor, in between armor. Armor for your armor. We've got helmets in all shapes and sizes. No matter how big your head, we'll squeeze you in. That's just a bucket. But it fits like a glove, Gov. Look. Wait, it doesn't fit. A couple of gentle taps with our special helmet mallet, and it's right as rain. That'll be three cans, thank you. There's no eye holes in it. I can't get it off. I can't see. Ow! Oh, dear. Well, yes, uh, business is booming. <laughs> oh, this armour has a fancy stall. Let's see what he's selling. Fresh from the mines of Baronia, forged in the heart of darkness, this mithril vest shall protect you from attack by sword, arrow, and the claws of the most dangerous creatures. Uh, what if I get hit on the head? Uh, yeah, mate, that's not in the warranty. Hello, you're live in the Good Vibe Show on Gamma Radio. Oh, you're one of the murderers, aren't you? You are no stranger yourself to the deadly art. No, I was acquitted. It was a miscarriage of justice. A widow maker such as yourself is surely in need of great protection, and I am humbled that you should choose my modest establishment. Please inspect my finest creation. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, it's making my nostrils jiggle. Ooh. Behold, Ichthyo armor. Ichthyo, Ichthyo, Ichthyo armpit. What? Ichthyo armor. Yes. Inspired by nature's most dangerous creatures, I have come up with the ultimate in personal protection. From head to toe, you will be protected by the toughest hides known to man. Gasp in awe at the boots of lobster shell. I am gasping, but it's the smell, I'm afraid. A thousand dolphin tongues were dried and cured to create these leg-protecting greaves. Cured of what? Being alive. The cod piece, as you can see, is... Uh... A, a dried piece of cod. Uh, yes, very good. I see you have an eye for apparel. Next, we have the whale lung undershirt with this giant crab shell breastplate with shark nipple rivets. Do sharks have nipples? Uh, uh, yes. Moving on to the crowning glory. Lesser armourers continue to live in the past by producing overburdensome and clumsy hard metal helmets. My unique innovation was to think beyond the realm of hard and into the realm of squishy. This fresh squid comes as one size fits all and can be tied under the chin with its built-in tentacles. It will protect you from all manner of blows to the cranium through the natural magic of rubbery flesh. Not only that, but it will also double as a dog cow riding helmet. And for the ladies, it also triples as an attractive evening handbag. Just gently place your belongings through its razor-sharp beak, a criminal deterrent, and into its gullet. Well, thank you. Uh, very interesting. Uh, now, I must move on. So now, listeners, we're going to go over... No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Uh, wait there a moment. Uh, after that pitch, you're just going to walk away. Well, well, I'm not a warrior. I'm a radio DJ. No, you must at least try on the helmet. A crowd has gathered. Come, come. No, no, thank you. No, I don't need any armour, honestly. Come on, just step this way, sire. Oh, no, really, wait. Wait, no, 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 no. Ah! Ah! Ooh, I think it's still moving. Ah, <laughs> now, how does it feel, sir? You must feel invincible, I'm sure. Oh, 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 oh. oh. It's getting... You're getting tighter! It's the uh, uh, self-adjusting chin strap, sir. Another innovation of mine. Uh, uh, it's still alive! Get it off! Uh, uh, oh, oh, very well, sir, but it just stands testament to the, uh, to the uh, freshness of the product. Stop wriggling, it'll come off! Fog! Over to you! Really, sir, if you keep it on any longer, you'll have to pay for it. <laughs> Marvellous. I do hope Dave gets that squid off his head. Eventually. <laughs> so, anyway, listeners, very soon I'll be leading a group of participants around the brand new Radium Run. A maze designed, built and constructed by me, filled with puzzles to boggle the mind and challenges to test the most adept of amateur adventurers. Join us after this advert. M -m 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 Mary, I uh, just wanted to, 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 to say you are the most b b b b b beautiful and attractive woman I've ever, ever seen. Uh, you are so clever you could outthink a, a, a posh calculator. You are so kind and wonderful. Will you, will you, will you b b b b b b b b b b b bury me? Oh, George. Of course I won't. You're lovely, kind, sweet and funny, but you're just so skinny. You look like human scaffolding. I could never marry such a bag of skin and bones. Oh. Oh, no. no. Oh, well. Plan B. Better go to the noose shop. Wait! 
Who? Me? Yes, you! Stop right there. You're a bony man, but you've got a heart of gold. Is that right? Uh, I suppose so. Right. And there's more to you than your puny frame and pathetic micro-muscles, isn't that correct? Well, well yes. I'm very k k k kind to animals. And if you had muscles like a big man, you'd win the heart of yonder fair maiden. But that's never going to happen, correct? <sighs> correct. Incorrect! With our new Muscle Master implants, we can transform you from a skinny malinky long legs into a certified beefcake in under one hour. Yes, we take the finest old chicken breasts, forgotten sausages and milk sops and give them a quick wash in a sink. Then we make small incisions in your skin. Finally, we stuff the meat underneath and pack it around your bones. If you've got the beans, we might even use our patented mallet anaesthetic first. Mary. George? Is that you? Damn right it is, baby. Oh, George, what a hunk. Let's go get married. I'd love to. Hmm, can you smell barbecue? Uh, no. Muscle Master implants are only five tins per operation. Act now to take advantage on our bulk deals. Warning, implants last one day at best and even then you should remain underground. Failure to remove implants could result in putrefaction. Schedule a removal operation now by calling 88.108 FM for only 30 cans. Welcome back. Now it's time for Radium Run. Welcome to the biggest showbiz extravaganza the Wasteland has ever seen. I'm your host, Fog, and I'm here with four amateur adventurers ready to take on the challenge of the Radium Run. Each contestant will take on one challenge each. If they succeed, they will receive a Radium Crystal that represents precious time in the Fortress of Fog, the final challenge. But if they fail, they will be locked in, leaving their teammates to carry on without them. Let's introduce today's contestants. So first we have Team Captain Godad the Tarberry Man. He's 22 and he's a professional camel puncher who's allergic to clothes. Then there's Clara Loft. She's 22 and is an upper class grave robber. Then we have Montana Smith. He's 22 and a part time professor, part time cultural decimator. And finally we have Duke Pie Stalker. He's the youngest of the group at 22 and a mystic in training with some serious daddy issues. Yes, a clumsy egotist with more robot body parts than a verminator. Hello, hello all. Welcome to Radium Run, the Wasteland's exciting new game show. Are you ready to face your challenges? Uh, Gonad, as team captain, who is going first and what sort of game shall they play? Gonad choose a uh, pie stalker for first game. He play a uh, mental game. Aha, a mental game. Pie stalker, follow me to the BBB zone. <laughs> Behind this door lies a mental challenge. You will require all of your cognitive reasoning skills to solve this dastardly puzzle. This is a two minute game, and if you fail the challenge, you will be locked into the room. I won't fail you. I'm not afraid. You will be. You will be. Now go on, in you go. Come on, Pie Storker, you can do it. Come in, come in and be seated. Your time is limited. Before you sit two truth sayers. One of us speaks the truth, the other speaks only in lies. The radium lies in either the red box or the blue box. One box contains the radium, the other box contains a boxing glove on a spring. You can only open one box. Oh, okay, uh, first truth sayer, uh, which one is the radium in? The red box. Okay, uh, second truth sayer. Uh, which one is the radium in? Uh, the red box. Haha, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, the truth teller always has to tell the truth. So that means it's gotta be the red box. Uh, but if the lie teller always tells lies, that means um, it has to be the blue box. No, wait. Uh, forgive us, please. Ask your question again. Okay, um, uh, number one, which one is the radium in? The blue box. Uh, number two, uh, which one is the radium in? Uh, the blue box. Okay, 
So, the red box has the radium in because one of you is always lying. So it's gotta be the red box. It, except, uh, one of you is always telling the truth. So it's gotta be the blue box. No, wait. I, I, I don't think I get this. No, wait. Uh, now I am confused. Hold on, hold on. Right, right, right. Are you both clear now? Well, that's not what you said to begin with. Just do it. Uh, 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 please, contestant, we do apologize. Ask us again. Uh, number one, uh, which one is the radium in? The red box. Number two, which one is the radium in? Uh, the blue box. No, no, I, I mean the red box. No, no, no the, the blue. Wait, so if, if you're telling the truth, it's in the red box. But if I'm telling the truth, it's in the blue box. Is that right? No, 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 no. If you're telling the truth, it's in the red box. If I'm telling the truth, it's... No, no, that's stupid. No. It, it, no, it must be the red box because if I'm the truth teller... Wait, wait, wait. Are you the truth teller? Or am I? Well, if I'm the truth teller, then I'd know it was in the red box. But if I were the truth teller, then I'd have to say the blue box. 30 seconds. Wait, aren't I going to be doing this? Never mind you, we need to get this right. So, so if the blue box contains the radium, I'd have to ask you which box it was in. And you'd have to say... The blue box. But of course that depends on whether I was the truth teller or the liar. Oh yes, uh, so I still wouldn't know. But if you were the liar, then it would be the red box. So if you ask me which box it was in, I'd have to say, uh, The red box. But how do we know you're not the speaker of untruths? Are you calling me a liar? Well, are you? No. Okay, that's settled it. But no, no, wait. You might have been lying. I wasn't. For all I know, you could be the liar. Ten seconds. Time to come out. Come out. Ah, oh. ah, time. Well, you made it out. Oh, thank the mother. I thought I'd be trapped in there all day. I was most confused. Uh, um, uh, well, on to the next game! No way! I'm the contestant! Don't leave me in here! You can't just go! Right. So, uh, who's playing the next one? Go, Nat? Uh, we will have Clara to play. Mystery game. Uh, okay, Clara, follow me! It's a three-minute game. It's a murder mystery. Examine the body and follow the series of clues in order to find the radium. In you go! Three minutes from when the door closes. Uh, uh, I'm in a room that looks like a, uh, a shop. There's a body on the floor. Uh, uh, there's a shop counter and a till, some shelves and some things on the walls. Clara, Clara, look at the body. body. Look at the body. body. Uh, there's a piece of paper in its hand. Look at the paper, paper. look at the paper. Look at paper. Uh, uh, I'm going to look at the shelves. Now oh, the paper. paper. There's no paper on the shelves. You stupid idiots, look at the paper in its hand. Whose hand? The bloody corpse's hand, are you dull? The newspaper? What newspaper? There's no newspaper in there. The corpse on the floor, look at its hand. Oh, the corpse's hand. There's nothing written on his hand. The paper. The paper. The paper. The paper. Oh, right, I see. Oh, oh, I get it now. Okay, I've got the paper. What does it, what does say? it say? What does it say? Read, read. I don't know. I don't think it can talk. The writing. The writing. The writing. The writing. Oh, I don't know. I, I can't read. Uh, what was that, Clara? You can't read? No, of course I can't. Oh, uh, well, that's that then. Uh, you didn't think this through, did you? Shut up. Uh, I'm sorry, Clara. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting this one short and I'm locking you in because you're useless. Go now, Captain, let's get out of here. Who's playing the next game? I will play physical games. <laughs> right you are, Captain's Choice. Follow me. Okay, inside here you will test your fighting prowess against one of the wasteland's most dangerous vegetables. You must wrestle a dwarf bear rockily plant and claim the radium hidden within its branches. Right, in you go. Go on, go on. Uh, I'm not going. What? But, but you chose the challenge. I uh, changed my mind. I have fear of vegetables. Ah, uh, salad dodger, eh? Well, you're not changing your mind. I spent good money on this. In you go. Oh. oh, man, it's only a little one. Barely six feet tall. Oh, help me! Oh. Oh. Go on, go, Nad. You can do it. Kick him oh. in the vegetable. Oh. Somebody help me! Stop running around in circles. Do you want to win this game show or what? Oh. No! Oh, no. It's got him. Uh, 
he's eating his trousers. Keep it away from me. No, that's my pants. Oh, 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 now now no, there's some vegetables no. we didn't want to see. Uh, help me get them out. Come on. Right, go now to cover up your namesakes. It's pulling me in. Absolutely useless. You're all terrible. You've won no radium at all. You better get one in the next game. I spent so many beans on Fox Fortress, I'll be damned if you don't bloody go in it at all. Right, will someone take this gonad away, please? He needs to see a tailor. So, right, uh, there's just you left, Montana Smith, and it's a skill game. <sighs> Come on, let's get this over with. Go on, in you go, it's a two minute game. Uh, okay, there's a sign on the wall. It says, build a robot to lift the slab and release the radium underneath. Uh, there's a pile of metal and some wires. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, don't worry, I'm uh, uh, an, an engineer. <laughs> uh, see that red wire? Plug it into that uh, axe thing there. Right, right, I, I've done that. Uh, what next, the, the arms? Oh, and the arms next, yes, yes. Don't forget the wearing blades, of course. Uh, right, okay. Um, right, all right, I've done that, I've done that. Now, set the artificial intelligence to, uh, uh, psychotic. Um, uh, are you sure? Yeah, yes, it will help with the lifting of the slab. Done that. Okay, now switch it on. You're doing very well, you have a whole minute left. Okay, starting her up. Hey, two, destroy. No, uh, uh, hang on. No, wait, wait. <laughs> Let's eliminate it. Powering down. Uh, uh, you were the lying truth sayer, weren't you? Uh, 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 no. Uh, let's go to Fox Fortress. What? No, no, you can't. You have no radium. And, and hang on a minute, you're not even playing the game. You're the truth sayer. Why are you here? Oh shit, look at that mess. This is all your fault, you meddling fish. Uh, uh, that was, uh, 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 th that's the end of Radium Run. We need to, uh, 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 Dave, Dave, come in, come in. Uh, ten fall rubber duck. We have a disaster here. It's really quite a, a, a mess, actually. Looks like a dog's dinner. Oh shit. Uh, Dave, Dave, are you there? Dave. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Welcome back, listeners. Uh, well, you'd be glad to know that I uh, had my uh, squishy helmet pulled off, and I'm feeling much better for it. So, whilst Fog is uh, clearing up his uh, awful mess, <laughs> uh, I'm here in the demonstration zone, where all sorts of armourers, weaponsmiths and blackfingers are preparing to showcase their best products to the punters. And here's one potential buyer right now. Hello, sir. You look like a potential adventurer. What are you looking forward to seeing the most today? Uh, I just popped in for some milk. I didn't know all this was happening. It's all very exciting now. Oh, uh, I see by your bulging hemp sack that you've been tempted by something there. Oh yes, just a couple of impulse buys. Hope my wife doesn't mind. Uh, what do you think of this? Oh, uh, is that a catapult? No! You bear it! It's the latest thing from the Demented Dan range of leatherware. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, uh, in the bottom of the bag there, that must be one of those uh, rat Mohicans that are so popular at the moment. <laughs> Let me try it on. <laughs> oh, look, it fits. <laughs> look at me. I'm an ancient wasteland psychopath. <laughs> uh, uh, no, that's just a merkin. Oh, I'll just... Uh, sorry, uh, the teeth confused me. I only took it off so I could wear my new one. Look! No! Oh. Here, have it back. Ooh. Well, moving on. Uh, you there. Uh, what are you hoping to see here today? Well, I heard that Carl's Choice are bringing out a new war machine. Oh, yes, it's got all the latest innovations in vehicular technology. Oh, right. Uh, such as? Well, they say this model moves on its own. Not a dog cow to be seen. How does it manage that? I thought all the petrol had run out. I don't know. I think they must be using forgotten technology since before the Big Bangs. Some it called... Gravy tea, or something like that. They are very clever. 
Yeah, evidently. And then, what else? Well, in their brochure, it says they have three types of spikes. Three types! Fully armoured, and has a special compartment to store lots of ammunition. Or warlords' wives, if you fancy taking one out for a nice day out. Well, that sounds revolutionary. This could be the beginning of powered transport for the masses. Maybe the wasteland is about to become more civilised. Is this the end of the end? And the beginning of what was previous again? Huh? Uh, I just want to run over my brother-in-law. Oh, well, uh, best of luck with that. Uh, oh, here's some music. I think they're starting. <clears throat> Mutants, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Explorers Expo 213 ABB! <laughs> now the moment you've all been waiting for! Carving open a new dimension in slashing, smashing and fashing fashion. Here are the latest styles from Amarella! First up, it's Val Kairi. Val is wearing this season's danger dungarees. Daytime workwear doesn't have to mean frump wear. The cheeky high thigh length cutoff means that she can wipe clean the blood from her legs and still show off those gorgeous curves at lunch. The quilted gambeson style fabric is also flame proof, guaranteeing she'll keep her cool even when the monsters are burning. Rude Sonia is killing the catwalk in this all-leather evening gown with matching trophy teeth tiara. In this classy ensemble, she'll kill her enemies by day and knock her lovers dead by night. Incorporating our newest range of breastplates made of decorative china and dazzling mop bucket heels, she'll have her enemies begging for mercy without even drawing her sword. And now, for the final showstopper. Barbara Ian is wearing the hottest adventuring outfit this season. She'll certainly turn plenty of heads before removing them in this scorching getup. The cat gut bikini top is augmented with bottle cap nipple protectors. The crotch guard is made of a modesty protecting bicycle chain held up with side tied matching cap gut. And she hasn't forgotten to protect her dainty feet with coordinated metallic toenail polish. I'll get more protection wearing a fucking crisp packet. I can see more tits here than at a politician's convention. I quite like it. It's very nice. She'll freeze to death before she even meets a bandit. Ah, madam, please. These outfits are for the younger generation of Lady Adventurer. They want to feel free and nimble. Not lumber around like walking porpoises. I'm 22! <laughs> ah, well, middle-aged women like yourself are already catered for. Perhaps you'd like to try the burlap shop. I believe there is a sale on hessian sacks. <laughs> There's more flesh on display than in the bloody butchers. Not according to the locals. <laughs> Am I right, boys? No! You should be ashamed of yourself! If you were a proper barbarian, you'd surely appreciate the efficient design of the cooling system built into this naughty little outfit. But I am a proper barbarian, you slimy little whale. Go oh, get him! Cut his bloody head off! Oh dear, the crowd are getting very wound up here. We don't like this guy at all. No, wait. I'm just a commentator. I didn't design the outfit. No more excuses, you ratty little shit. I'll show you proper barbarism. Wow! That was close! Right, keep still! Ah! You singed my chest carpet! Hold it! It's the tuna. You know the rules! If anyone has an issue with anyone else at the Explorers Expo, you must resolve your issue in the Rumble Zone! Rumble Zone! Rumble Zone! Two men enter! One man leaves! Two men enter, one man leaves. I'm a Two woman. Two men Two women enter, one man leaves. Two women enter, one A man and a woman enters, either a man or a woman leaves. A man or a woman enters, either a man or a woman leaves. A man or a woman isn't a man or a woman.
Spider-Man. Two people slash mutant center. One of those people will leave. Two people slash mutant center. One of those people will leave. All right, all right. Someone take these two away to get ready. Uh, can I sit this one out? No? Oh, jeez. Let go of me. I can walk on my own. Well, poor old voiceover man. Bit off more than he could chew there, I think. But overall, lots of lovely armour on display there. I could see a lot of punters queuing up in droves at the stalls. Uh, oh, it looks like uh, Commerce Overlord Tina Tuna is ready to start the next show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tina Tuna! Uh, uh, again! Oh, thank you, everybody. It's fabulous to be here. I'm proud to be representing the Master Blasters here today. I've been asked to present the finest selection of personal problem-solving equipment available. We've got guns, we've got bats, we've got laser rifles and plasma launchers, but really, I'm here to present the specials. First up, we have one of our favorite inventions for you all to see, the Power Fist. Yes, this oversized metal glove is made from the finest biscuit tins beaten into shape around our favorite hand-shaped rock. Adorned with spikes, plates, and very strong rivets, this glove will not only strike fear to the hearts of your enemies, but also turn your arms into a certified muscle machine. But the power, Tina. Where's the power, I hear you cry? Well, here it is, friend. A pre-war car battery. Generously glued to the outer casing for easy access. This baby can deliver an electrical charge that can knock out a scriven in one punch. To demonstrate this highly specialized apparatus, let me introduce to the stage, Slippo Grandworthy. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be the first person ever to test this. What am I testing? Uh, the power fist. What? I'm not testing a sex toy on stage. It's a weapon. Oh, oh, sorry. Right, oh, uh, let's give it a try. Bring out the scriven. I can't fight that! And don't worry, the power fist will eliminate it in one hit. Now put it on, quickly! Okay, putting it on now! Ah, ah. <laughs> oh! Oh my! The giant metal fist was so heavy, it pulled Mr. Crunchworthy arm first through the stage! Oh dear, the scriven seems to be fixated on his pair of legs, thrashing around like a... like a... Juicy pair of worms! Uh, uh, quickly! Sedate the monster! Oh, it's too late, listeners! Ah! Oh no! Oh no! The Scriven has uh, eaten Mr. Crunchworthy in one bite, but in doing so has also eaten the Power Fist and had a very nasty shock. Oh, cheese this vice! Get that thing out of here! Quickly! Uh, I'm sorry about that, folks. Uh, I guess it needs some refinement. At least the battery is working. Will someone get me a fresh pair of shoes? The blood has ruined these. God damn it. Well, while it's a live show, folks, just goes to show anything can happen. Okay, for our next demonstration, we'll be showcasing the latest in stealth for the self technology. People of Lower Spittle, may I present to you the Rinka Dink Slink Machine, the one and only Sneak Boy 3000. Our Sneak Boy is a small electric people programmed to be bad at sneaking. Bad at sneaking, I hear you ask. Yes, you heard correctly. By wearing clodhopper boots and heavy chains around their necks, these heavy-duty clunkers make so much noise, they will always get caught. Instead of you, the real adventurer. Just release these walking decoys into any room where you need to take furtive action, and we can guarantee they'll attract all the attention, allowing you to slip past guards, pickpocket someone with ease, or even slip a fragmine down somebody's trousers. Right. Let him go, boys! Ow! Oh! Oh! Just to me! Oh! 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 This funny little bag is out there! Oh my god! What are you doing? Oh! Oh my god! As you can see, they are both very noisy and distracting, as they push people out of their way and make all sorts of public faux pas to really grind people's gears. Ow! What are you doing? Ow, my foot! Oh! Oh! Get away from me, you robot bastard! He's looking at my mission! Oh, where you going? Okay, okay, call him back. As you can now see, people, I have in my hand a sack full of all your valuables. 
taken from you by the real sneaks, whilst you are distracted by our models. You see, people, the power of these machines. Don't worry, you could have your possessions back. Cash! Oh, oh, give that back. That's mine. Ooh, that's nice of the boy. Get your own chicken shaver. Hands off my conkers, they're attached to me. Er, maybe, maybe that wasn't such a good idea after all. Okay, well a little earlier than we anticipated. It's time for a grand finale. The ultimate war machine. The mechanical marvel. The super hot chariot. It's transportation masturbation, everybody. We present to you the Caged Fiori. Oh, well, this is not quite what I expected. Uh, I'm not an expert on uh, armoured fighting vehicles, but I'll try and describe the um, uh, awesome uh, spectacle I can see in front of me. It's a sort of small square cage with a few coat hangers strapped to it, and there's a, a rabbit skull stuck on the front. Uh, there are spikes, but I'm not sure they're intentional. There are some ancient car doors strapped to the sides, and there's a, there's a bloke sitting in it waving a big stick. The power plant appears to be a small orphan pushing it along. But it's a job in it, mister. Behold! Gage Fury! Whoa! A fine mesh of steel and wheel, the Cage Fury is the latest in innovative war machines from Troll's Choice. With sophisticated side armor made of steel and glass, a scary war decoration to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies, and spikes to stop people jumping on top of you whilst you career along. Based on an original design by Painsbury's and powered by Gravy Tea, an almost limitless source of power, this trolley of terror will be sure to protect you from any wasteland random encounter. Now, for the demonstration, we need a volunteer from our audience. Who will be the first to ride this vehicle of violence? Me? I'm the biggest one! I've been in that! Never been in one before, please, big man! You right there! Step right up! Don't be shy! Okay, now, climb into the basket and hold on tight for the ride of your life! Now, as you can see, the organic child-based starter motor can push the machine up almost any oh, incline. Listen, white mister! Once it's at the top, a small injection of gravy tea will take over. Oh, you ain't off with me. Right, off you go. How do I screw this thing? It, it pulls to the back and left. Left, turn left. Ah! Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, that was the only one we had. Uh, don't worry, boys, we'll charge the volunteer for damages, if he's still alive. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the show. For all those seeking the fabled treasure of Sara Madre, good luck. Buy the best, and beat the rest. Well, that is, uh, very interesting. Lots of useless junk people will spend enormous amounts of beans on. Oh, oh, anyway, it looks like the, the Battle of the Bands is about to get underway. Apparently, they've only got two entries this year. What are their names again, Fog? Fog? Oh, buggered off somewhere. Oh, if I catch him in Mogs... Oh, oh well, listeners, you're stuck with me again. <laughs> oh, well, I, I can't wait to see what happens. Last year's winner, Petunia Dank, is now fortunately deceased. And so this year, anyone has a chance to win. The rules are simple. Whichever band has brought the most friends along wins the prize. It looks like the first band is going to play right now. Hello, Lower Spittle. We're Banger and Mash. Welcome to the show of the century. This is our first and last song called Sticking Up Uranium. Bang, bang, bang. Crash, crash, crash. This is what you get with Banger and Mash. We like to hit. We like to shout. Mash, 
Club in this town like a nasty rash Bagger and mash, bagger and mash All the others are a load of trash Thank you! Well, that was uh, energetic. Um, I apologise to all those with uh, sensitive ears out there. <laughs> I hope the next act will uh, prove to be... Wait a minute. Is that... Fog? He's hardly wearing any clothes. He's got that Barbara Ian bikini armour on. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Forget, and I'm here to lip-sync along to a love ballad by Tina Tuna. Boo! Lip-syncing is rubbish! What? It's, it's an art form in itself, you, you little creep! Actually, it's illegal to lip-sync in this competition. Illegal? But I was hoping my outrageous dance moves would win me the prize! Oh, do you have anything else? Uh, uh, I could do, I could do a comedy skit. Oh no! It's against the rules! It's a song or nothing, I'm afraid, Miss, uh, Forget. Oh shit, okay. Uh, oh, okay, uh, I'll, I'll do a song about... Uh, 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 you, you, uh, pass me that guitar, you. Hey, uh, that's mine! Oi, give me a Shut up! Uh, right, right, uh, this one is called, uh, uh, Bringing Sexy, uh, uh, Belly Back. For all those handsome mutants out there. Oh no, I can't watch. Some people like toned muscular bodies, others are obsessed with tits. Some people think skinny people are hotties, but others like extra armpits. Whatever your taste, we can all agree that no matter what you pack, there is nothing quite as sexy as a lovely round belly back. I have a friend who is really quite hot. She makes people swoon when they see her. But most other people think she is not. Her appearance belies her demeanor. A circle of limbs surrounds her form. Arms and legs like a spider. Her eyes she has eight and she walks with a gait that disguises the love deep inside her. Some people are cruel, some people are stupid, but they are not touched by a mutated cupid. Some people are wicked, some people are thick, well they never see them a juice a dick. Sometimes humans are particularly snotty, having no brain in their bots. If you were a mutated hottie, you could be fingered in twelve holes at once. That's not to say non-mutants are boring, they still have a modicum of fun. But the thing I am indeed imploring is that ten options are better than one! Thank you! Thank you all! Don't forget! Vote forget! Let's go crit! No. Well, it's a no from me, I'm afraid. What? Take it from me, darling. I've been to every dive in this wasteland. You won't make it. Uh, you, what? You sound like a cat with a sewn-up asshole. You, you think I'm terrible, do you? Well, well, let me say to you. And the medieval thing is so before the big bang. I, I, what, you, you, what, well, it's not up to you anyway, you snotty, toppy-nosed, bucktooth wanker. It's for the crowd to decide. <sighs> well, let's put it to the crowd then. All those voting for bangers and mash, raise your hands. That's uh, da -da 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 -da. okay. And all those voting for uh, forget. Uh, that's uh, da -da 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 -da. okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we have a tie. Two votes each. I love you, Petunia. I'm not Petunia. Well, in the event of a tie, I have the casting vote. Oh, uh, no, 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 wait. Uh, 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 that person over there hasn't voted. Wait, what? Uh, no, I, I'm a neutral observer. Oh, you talk. I thought you were a leftover Christmas decoration. Well, you're in the square. You're technically audience. Who are you voting for? Uh, make the right uh, uh, choice, uh, uh, person I don't know. Uh... Okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, the first one. No, 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 no. Vote for the most talented act. Um, the first one. No! Are you mad? Vote for the act that clearly deserves the accolade and the glory. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case, uh, the first one. Dave! How dare you? Is your brain made of dog's will? 
Are you go Well, the gentleman has made his decision. We'll have to take his first answer. His second answer. And his third answer. And the winner is... Banger and Mash. You crackpot spunk spewer! Mr. Banger, Mr. Mash, here is your prize. You'll both be taken under my wing. And for the next year, I'll drag you from dive bar to dive bar, forcing you to play your music to unappreciative audiences, while all the time, I'll siphon off all the profits while allowing you only a pittance to live on. Welcome to the music industry, boys. <laughs> Crusty prolapse! Now, if you'd both like to follow me backstage, you can sign the contract. In blood. And we'll get you measured up for uh, neck collars. Right, get out of my way! Ow. Right, hey, hey! Oi, oi! oi. You, get, get, get off, you, right! What? Dave, you absolute bastard! Do you see what you've done? They've got a recording contract and a year's worth of forced labour for that idiot. That could have been me. Uh, look, uh, I couldn't vote for you. It would have been a uh, nipotism. Imagine the scandal if there was corruption discovered in the media industry. And to top it all off, I was beaten by a pair of ugly, slap-headed pigs wearing leather nappies and drawing pins up their noses. Where am I going to get the opportunity to record all my masterful work now? How else will I give the gift of my music to the uncultured plebeians of the wasteland? Well, I was thinking, uh, you do live in a radio station, Fog. Yes, and? And you're a co-presenter on a successful radio show broadcasting throughout the wastes. Yes, get to the point. And you're an audio engineer too. It's just an out there idea, I know, but... Maybe you could record your songs and broadcast them too? To an even wider audience than Banger and Mash are ever going to get. All from the comfort of your own favourite armchair. Oh. Oh, I see. Uh, 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 the equipment's rubbish. No, don't say that, Fog. We use it all the time and it's fine. Now, come along. Have some wine. We'll say no more about it. Yes. Wine. Yes. Oh. These shoes are killing me. You don't have to wear the costume at home, Fog. I know. I like the costume. Uh, so, listeners, uh, after the break, we'll be joined by investigative journalist Stinky Badges and travelling scientist Nile Bacon. Do you want to fight a scriven, but your bones are just too brittle? Do you want to taste adventure, but you're stuck in Noah's Pittle? Do you want to swing a sword, but you're full of bolognese? Don't take the risk, try Insta holidays. We take a motorcycle helmet and seal it tight. Then we make damn sure that we block out all the light. Pitch a painted postcard slot into a slot. Shine a torch from outside in, and what have you got? Insta holidays! Drink and take you around the world! Insta holidays! You'll see miracles of pearls! Insta holidays! You can trust the water! Insta holidays! Slaughtered. You could see a mountain or a lake from your sofa Or a load of animals like wildebeest to gophers Whatever takes your fancy and whatever your mood You can do it in pyjamas, you can do it in the nude Insta Holiday Our destinations are quite splendid Insta Holiday And we're highly recommended Insta Holiday Underwhelmingly authentic Insta Holiday The Adventure of Domestic Ladies and gentlemen It's time for a uh, uh, guest uh, yes, welcome back, listeners. Uh, Fog is a little um, tired and emotional <laughs> after the Battle of the Bands, but uh, after a little uh, refreshment, he says he's ready to present our next segment, Out of the Fog. Well, he has to, or the, or the title doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's, very, it's very good of you, Dave, to, to give airtime on the show for my songs. Uh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out about that, Fog, okay? Uh, what am I doing? Uh, questions! I have the questions! Who has the uh, answers? You're supposed to find out the answers, Fog. Mm. Uh, welcome to uh, Out of the Fog, I guess. Uh, 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 Stinky Badges and, of course, uh, Mr. Nile Bacon are here to debate the legend of the treasure of Sara Madre in front of a live audience. Uh, actually, I think this gentleman's dead. Uh, oh, uh, almost live audience. Uh, so, uh, my first question is... Do you like my outfit? Uh, yes, it's uh, very nice. Uh, uh, very fetching. Excellent! We'll get on famously. So, second uh, question. Which one of you is the idiot who thinks the <laughs> uh, treasure is actually real? Uh, he is that idiot. I am no fool, my friends. But I do have proof that the treasure is indeed here. Where? I can't see any treasure. 
Oh, you mean me? A tr- national treasure, of course. Well, thank no, no, you. no, 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 you yeah. strange little man. I, I speak of the treasure of Sara Madre. I have lived my entire life with the legend haunting my dreams, guiding me, leading me to this very moment. We are on the cusp of the greatest discovery since the last discovery I made. Uh, have you read my book? What is it with you people and writing books? Well, what else are we going to do? Anyway, if you had read my books, you would know that my puzzle is almost complete. Look, here it is. What's that? Looks like you've just scribbled loads of random words on the underside of a jigsaw. They are not random. Look, this one says uh, treasure. Uh, This one says hidden. And this one says wasteland. Uh, And look. This one says lower spittal. You've just written that on there. Oh, very good, very good. Very compelling evidence. You must be assured that this gentleman here knows absolutely nothing. I have traveled these lands for over 20 years, and I have not seen a single shred of evidence that the treasure is even real. Uh, Finally, someone who talks sense! Every culture has its legends, fable built upon fable, disseminating throughout the land, building a commonality amongst folk tales far and wide to the point where the similarities seem uncanny to regular folk, such as yourselves, culminating in a false belief based on mutual assurance and absence of a more rational explanation. Uh, what's he on about? Dissecting this groundwork with scientific principles and methodology means that I have discovered the true meaning of such a <laughs> shaggy dog story. It's a wreath of falsehoods, an architecture, albeit unintentionally, of deceit and lies. Er, what I mean is, it's total bullshit! (gasps) Fear not, my friends, fear not. I have put up with this sort of slander all my career. Now, are you prepared to hear the truth? If you have read my popular magazine, Something Smells with Stinky Badgers, you will know that my investigations have taken me all over the wasteland. I have investigated the flying pink pig of Battery Power Plant. I stood for three days in the rain watching the tears fall from the weeping statue of the North, just off the A1. I have chased the Grey Lady through the streets of Fishfart. I think it's absolutely disgusting, and I'm still gonna press charges. Oh, you again? I have apologized. I thought you were a ghost. Now stop following me. Wait, Uh, you're sure you're not a ghost? Haunting me. Clearly you are. Proof, people. I'm not a ghost. Oh, he's shot him in the back. He's coming around. He's been all night. I'm on his side. I can't can't see a fate. Yes, he's just just lingering around. Leave her alone. She paid for a ticket. She can haunt him if she wants. So, you see, I am somewhat of an expert on the subject of the unexplained. What's going on now? Who's asking the questions? You are. No, Dave. Who's asking the question? What? Uh, okay. I am. Okay. Oh, shog. So, uh, yeah, yeah, audience, um, uh, two uh, points of view there. But let's try and pull this uh, dog's mess uh, back towards the matter in question. The legend of the treasure of Sara Madre. Audience, anybody like to ask a question? Gentleman at the back there with the toe moustache. Uh, clearly Mr. Badger says it's real, but they haven't mentioned where we can find it. Yes, the treasure is real. Thirteen crystal skulls belonging to King Arthur, the alien warlord of Atlantis. Uh, if he was king of Atlantis, why is the treasure here? Uh, 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 Robbing Hood stole them to uh, fight the uh, Chupacapras of uh, Melting Mowbray. Uh, their uh, uh, combined power created an uh, interdimensional portal to summon Bigfoot to fight the beast. And then he buried them here in Lower Spittle. Uh, uh, let me light this candle of science in your mythical darkness. If a child asks, Mommy, where is the treasure of the Sara Madre? The reply is all too often, Nobody knows, but maybe you'll be the one to find it. Wouldn't it be fairer to the child to answer, Shut your stupid mouth and get back to work. Chances are, you won't live to 22, let alone find non-existent treasure. Oh, well, that's uh, rational, I suppose. 
but a little harsh, don't you think? Life is harsh, Dave. You should all just stay in your shacks. There's no more science to be found. We know everything we need to know. There's no need to go out looking for new things. Uh, your, your, your eyes will fall out. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so where's this treasure then? I have the answer. No, you don't. If you knew where the treasure was, you'd have it already. Yeah, he's just one of them Charlotte and- But he was right about the ghost. Wait, wait, people, please. The final piece of the puzzle is yet to be revealed. You see, it was when I was listening to that old clip from the Good Vibes show that I heard these words. Special. Scientific. Research. Authority. What's he on about? S. Yes? No, no, no. S. Yes? R. R. A. A? S-S-R-A. Is it clear now? Don't you see? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. Super special radio attack. Oh. Super special radio attack. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but you won't be getting a deal with them. <laughs> oh, yes, because you killed them. <laughs> Shut up, Fog. Oh, no, no. Oh, well, actually, yes. Kind of. What? I was right. Well, hmm. SSRA stands for Super Special Radio Attack, yes, but also it stands for Special Scientific Research Authority. Your studio is in fact a communications hub for an old military base. Look, the letters are still on the signs. S S R A. Oh yeah! What's more, if you say those letters together quickly, what does it sound like? No, 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 no. Yes! Yes? Yes! Sra! 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 Out of the madre! He's right! He's found the treasure! He's found the treasure! Where else but in a secret research base? Would you build the infamous Madre of legend? In our studio? You must be joking. It's just full of uh, rubbish. There's no secret base in there. It's in the studio! Pickaxe is ready, everyone! He, he's Come quite on, right, you know. Go, I've done go. extensive go. research into that building go. and there's nothing, nothing go. at all inside go. except go. certain go. death. Go. Don't go in go. there! Go. No, go. your eyes will fall out. Your arms will crawl away. Your intestines will turn into vipers. You'll, you'll, you'll shit out of your mouth. It's there! There it is! Go on, quick, let's go! Yeah, let's go! Please, please, who are you gonna listen to? A self-aggrandizing crackpot sprouting nonsense or a credible worldly renowned traveling scientist such as myself to the studio come on then let's go no no wait oh yes shit no no wait wait people please no no fuck 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 wake up wake up we're gonna invade our home my wife my outfit uh, my device! Oh, 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 right. Oh, ow, ow, I've lost a nipple! Oh, come on, Fog! They're gonna smash our studio! My Again. barbarian heel is snapped! Okay, well, uh, thanks for listening! Uh, we're, uh, we're, oh! Uh, let's go, let's go! Quick, Dave, they're filthy! <laughs> oi, oi, get away from that! It's expensive! <laughs> Oh, bloody hell. Who oh, is this still on? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Miserable Albert here. Oh, dear. Looks like I'm going to have to find a new studio again. So many shitty memories. Anyway, it's time for happy hour. I'll be back after this boom. Gamma Radio. Trent Harbottom is back with his new travel book, Bearing Up, an exciting, almost erotic account of Trent's multitudinous encounters with the fauna of the wasteland. 
Ever since Trent's heroic escape from the clutches of a thousand unusually large and nasty swamp rats in an ill-thought-out segment on the Good Vibe Show on Gamma Radio, Trent has been busy documenting the best way to deal with the dangerous beasts of the wasteland. Let Trent's good humour and bombastic storytelling teach you how to defend yourselves from a deadly womble attack, or how to cook and prepare splitter rabbits, or even take shelter from radstorms in the stomachs of hideous Borisian Johnsonites. It's a rip-roaring adventure, the likes of which you've never read before. Don't believe me? Let's hear what everyone is saying about it. Terrific. I wet myself laughing. And once from fright. That was Jerry Attrick from the Lower Spittle Chronicle. It was awesome. Trent is a real action hero. No word of a lie. Misspoke 23. It was all right. The usual old bullshit. Mum! Oh, yeah, yeah, it was good, Trent. Uh, uh, she's not my mum. Bearing up by Trent Hardbottom. Get your copy today. Look what I found. A brand new can of special weapon paint. I can finally customise my rusty lead pipe. What? You picked that up? For nothing? Yeah. I think some good Samaritan left it lying around. Oh, you mug. What's the point of picking up free stuff when you could just pay for it just as easily? Pay for it? Why would I want to do that? Well, if you pay for it from Beth as the second-hand rebrand shop, not only do you get a tin of paint, but also a guarantee that it will uh, work. Hmm. Like a free one? Uh, yeah. But only more so because you've uh, cause you paid for it. But what's wrong with this one I got here? Uh, let me show you. Oh, oh, I'm blinded, I'm blinded. Oh, I wish I'd paid for it now. Beth has the second-hand rebrand shop. Why settle for free stuff when you can pay for it instead? 